first major report into the government's response to coronavirus has found, and it was published overnight, has found that there were serious errors and serious delays which cost many thousands of lives. The MPs' report found ministers waited too long to bring in lockdown measures. Well, joining us now is uh, the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, our Cabinet Minister this morning, Steve Barclay. Very good morning, good morning. to you, Mr Barclay. Good morning. This is an absolutely devastating report. This was one of the most important public health failures this country has ever faced. And from the start, it appears we did not take the measures seriously enough. We didn't go hard, fast or early enough. What do you say to that accusation? Well, we did take measures. We deployed the vaccine at pace uh, and I think saved many lives by doing so. We acted quickly to protect the NHS. We followed uh, scientific advice uh, throughout. Uh, but you're right, there will be lessons uh, to be learned. That is why we have committed to a public inquiry. We were dealing with an unprecedented situation. It was a global pandemic. People were learning about the virus as we let went along. There was no perfect scientific view. Uh, we were following the advice that we received, but everyone was learning uh, from the pandemic uh, as uh, we dealt with we it. So there will be lessons okay, let to me, learn. Let me just interrupt. Why... Um, of course, nobody is doubting that the vaccine it was hugely successful, but that came very, very late on in the pandemic. We were late to lockdown. The report says if we'd locked down a week earlier, 20,000 lives could have been saved. Now, if you're one of those families who knows that your loved one could have been saved if we'd gone a week earlier, you'd be absolutely furious this morning with the government. What do you say to those families? Well, my heart goes out to those families. It's absolutely devastating. Uh, for them, and, and not just the loss, but also the funerals were very aware of, of just how uh, awful that was in terms of the restrictions uh, on funerals uh, as well. And I think all of us know uh, people and family friends uh, that have been affected uh, by this. So I think this is something that has touched uh, us all. Uh, and there will be it? lessons. Who, Mr Barclay, whose fault was it that we were late to lockdown? Well, I don't uh, accept that we were late uh, to lockdown. We were no, dealing the with the information. The report says if we'd gone a week earlier, 20,000 lives could have been saved. I mean, that means that we were late to lockdown. Well, as I think you yourself have debated on the programme many times, there is a, a wide range of views amongst your own viewers in terms of whether we locked down too much for too long, whether we didn't, didn't lock down uh, enough. There's a, a wide range of views on that. Chris Whitty, as but the chief medical officer, said... this establishes we were late to lockdown and could have saved 20,000 lives. My question to you is, was that a scientific mistake or was that a political mistake? Well, as Chris Whitty himself said in October, there's no perfect time for lockdown. There's a range of factors that are considered. And obviously what we know now is very different to what we knew at the time those decisions were being taken. For example, at the time of the first lockdown, one of the principal concerns was that we wouldn't be able to lock down for a long period. And therefore the timing of that had to be at the optimum time because of the, the limited duration that people would endure a lockdown for. We now know after the course of the pandemic, that actually people were willing to endure a lockdown for a much longer time than was originally envisaged. So, so the point is, there aren't misjudged perfect, there the public. Then. Knowledge on these issues. Is that is that the is that the answer? You misjudged the public because, in fact, we were incredibly compliant when it came to lockdown, weren't we? Oh, the public uh, did respond magnificently. Uh, to lockdown uh, in terms of listening to the concerns and, and reacting. Uh, more so, I think it's fair to say, than was envisaged when the timing of the decision was reached. And this is why we're going to have an inquiry, because these were finely balanced decisions. The government throughout followed the scientific advice, but I readily accept there will be lessons to learn. That is why we have the inquiry to do so. None of that negates the pain and suffering. I know families watching this, thinking of their loved ones, will feel. We all know people in our communities who have suffered that loss. I think everyone was trying to do their best at the time in terms of the scientific advice and the decisions, but they were finally made judgments and there was no perfect information 
from which to learn. And that's why it's important we have an inquiry, but throughout the government followed the scientific advice to protect our NHS from the surges we saw in countries like Italy, to get the vaccine deployed as quickly uh, as possible and to get that balance right. I would say overall, listening to you very carefully, that, that, that your, your tone as a, as a government minister here this morning is, is quite defensive, although you have actually said a couple of times that you accept that mistakes were made. So let's zero in on that. And bearing in mind what you say about hindsight, which many of our viewers accept, they accept that a lot of the stuff that, that went wrong went wrong because we didn't know enough at the time. But we can, we can focus on a couple of things. The failure to introduce lockdown until we did and the failure to push the wearing of masks. And both of those were areas where the Prime Minister had very strong views. And as I was saying earlier, we have a, a Prime Minister with a strong personality who clearly dominates his Cabinet. And I just wonder... And I doubt you're going to give me a straight answer to this, but I'll ask anyway. I just wonder how much of the problem here and the reason for the mistakes that you describe them as and as the report describes them as was Boris Johnson's um, implacable opposition to begin with... Uh, towards lockdown, on principle, and on the wearing of masks, on principle, that he dominated the Cabinet response until finally it became obvious that those things had to happen. Well, some other people, Richard, have criticised the government for following the scientific advice too literally and for locking down for too long. So there's, there's a range of, of views, and these are finally balanced uh, decisions. I'm, I'm accepting that there will be lessons to learn. It's right that we have an inquiry in order that these things are scrutinised uh, in detail. Uh, we did follow the scientific advice, we did save lives, we did protect the NHS, but clearly these were finely balanced uh, decisions. And as Chris Whitty himself says, as the Chief Medical Officer, there isn't a perfect time when taking a decision on something as important as a national lockdown. No, but there's a, there's a general sense, isn't there, coming from this report, and to some extent coming from you this morning, uh, that the old mantra, better safe than sorry, was shrugged off in those early weeks and months. I mean, I was saying earlier, I, I wasn't present on this programme in, in, in the early parts of COVID because Piers Morgan didn't go anywhere, because he couldn't go anywhere. And I was watching at home, and I, I noticed, and I'm not saying this to blow this programme's trumpet, but I noticed constantly the presenters and journalists on this, this programme in the early weeks before the lockdown and before um, the restrictions regarding masks were introduced, journalists were saying, we ought to be doing this now. Why aren't we doing this now? And the response seemed to be very much, oh, it'll, it'll be fine, it'll be OK. As I say, that better safe than sorry mantra was sort of ignored, wasn't it? Well, there's a, ba there's a balance. There's also an impact to the economy. There's an impact to jobs. Uh, there's an impact, as you've covered on the programme, in terms of people with cancer diagnosis uh, who haven't presented. There's mental health challenges from lockdown, as you know, we see in terms of our schools. So there's a whole range of factors that need to be considered. Now, you know, we accept that there will be lessons to learn. That's why we're going to have this inquiry to do so. And we will explore many of those debates that, as you refer to, Richard, were debated on the programme. And I absolutely recognise that. Barkley, I came you, on the programme You keep saying you're going to hold this inquiry, and we know that an inquiry is being held. This is part of that. A an, an investigation has been held. This is your own MPs on two very highly respected select committees coming out with this damning judgment. But your response seems to be, well, it was tough at the time and it was finely balanced and we could have done things differently and maybe, you know, we'll, we'll look at those again. I just wonder, you, you have heard that tens of thousands of lives could have been saved if your government had done things differently. Do you feel that on your conscience? Would you want to, as a government, offer an apology to anybody whose life has been devastated by those catastrophic mistakes? Well, Susan, I, I absolutely recognise the devastation that many families have faced. That's why, back in May, the Prime Minister uh, was very upfront in saying that the government takes responsibility for everything that has happened uh, and is sorry for the suffering that people have experienced uh, and we're keen to learn the lessons uh, from that. Now, these are finely balanced decisions that are taken on things like lockdown. Our knowledge now is very different on issues like asymptomatic infection. We now know far more about that than we did uh, at the time of the first lockdown. Uh, so we have worked through things like the vaccines, the protecting the NHS and so forth, but there was other areas where the information we now have is very different to the information that the yes, government well, had obviously, at obviously, the time these decisions were obviously taken. Obviously, it was a steep learning curve and everybody accepts that. And I have to tell you that we've been, we've been bombarded with messages on this story throughout the, the show today. And I have to say that the majority of people are surprisingly forgiving um, and are actually saying that they understand that, uh, that the, the reason for some of the mistakes wasn't 
um, malpractice, but it was uh, basically scientific ignorance. We didn't know enough. There are others, however, who are extremely angry, particularly those who lost, who lost loved ones in care homes when their relatives were sent back when they shouldn't have been. But on the whole, you seem to be getting away with it. Um, no, certainly, as I far as our viewers are concerned. <laughs> I take issue with that. Do you? I, yeah, Go on. I, yeah. You, there were, there were, there's at, a litany at... of mistakes, um, Steve Barclay, and um, uh, I'm afraid you haven't got away with anything, uh, <laughs> as this report shows. You know, too many things were done too late. But, you know, we appreciate your time. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed.